Good morning, folks. Today we're going to hit frosty deserts and brand new revelations about changes at the top of the sky, likely due to the magnetic pole shift. But we've also had CME impacts and geomagnetic storm conditions, so let's start with the last 24 hours on our star. Mostly quiet day. We did see a few M-class solar flares erupt at the active regions, small pop went off near center disk, and then another top left incoming on the north. Neither has set a strong CME in Earth's direction. But speaking of which, we expected a double impact over the last 24 hours and it did arrive. We were watching when the first shockwave impacted Earth's magnetic field, solid initial impact at the pink hashed line there. To the right of that, the secondary humps and variability in the stream, that's the second impact. It was a bit weaker and later than expected. Nevertheless, despite a bit weaker, we did get up to the level 2 geomagnetic storm condition this morning in the wake of those shock waves. If you saw Aurora last night, you were probably at pretty high latitude. Moving on to the sunspots, same story as yesterday. Biggest group turned out of view and there is a bit of decay to the others. Still some flaring happening, but we are in a medium flare watch only at the moment. These large dark coronal holes will magnetically connect to Earth in the next two days, that's our earthquake watch, and then their faster solar wind should be arriving at Earth Friday or Saturday. We'll have eyes open for geomagnetic excitement. Quick jump to the desert, where the Sahara was a bit frosty in the morning hours. While there have been several interesting desert snow stories in the last couple years, this really isn't one of them. The region is in Algeria, fairly well north of the equator, in a mountainous area. Not quite as uncommon as it may have initially appeared, still cool. Our top story today begins with a review of one of the biggest stories of the summer, the collapse of the F2 layer of the ionosphere. It has been shrinking, and the best culprit would be the magnetic pole shift. So, when we get this new study suggesting that the critical frequency is collapsing as well, ears and eyes perk up. Not only is it collapsing at the same trend over time, but they identify a non-solar contribution to the collapse. They guess it might be human caused. Oh, I don't think so. And if you read it, they don't really even seem convinced themselves. It's the magnetic pole shift, slowly changing our planet. Folks, you only have a couple hours left to sign up for the Observer Review before we send out this month's special video. Plus, all the 2024 issues put together. Hundreds of pages, Observer Science only. Sign up at the link below. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.